All right, so the seven, eight warm up started with finding the area of the figure with the given vertices. Remember, you're setting up a matrix where the X's are the first column, the Y's are the second column, ones are the third column. And then you're finding the determinant. The determinant was 30, negative 35. You always want your area to be positive. So if it's negative, you change it to positive. And then you multiply by half. You should have gotten 35 uh, divided by 2. Or you could have gotten 17 and 1 half. Or you could have gotten 17.5. Any of those answers will work for that. Okay? Questions? Just be really careful. Like I just went through quizzes with some of you. And it literally like... The rewriting of the columns, you'll lose the negative, or the multiplying down your um, diagonals, you'll lose a negative. I am going to let you use a scientific calculator on this, okay? But just be careful because even in there, you're going to you can type it in wrong and then you get the wrong answer. So you do not need a calculator. It is not math that you can't do without, but it certainly would help you with time purposes, which is why I'm letting you use it. Scientific only, not function. Can't have a matrix button or a matrix menu, okay? All right, number two is to determine whether the points are collinear. So again, you would set up a matrix where the x's are the first column, the y's are the second column, ones fill the third column, find the determinant, and if the determinant is zero, then they are collinear. This time it was zero, these points are collinear. If it was anything other than zero, they're not. Third one was using Kramer's rule on a two variable system. So the first one to remember to find D, you're gonna do the X's and the Y's. The determinant there was 30. D sub X, you take out the X's and in the place of the X's. So in the first column, you put the constants and the D sub X there is negative, or negative 90. And then D sub Y, this time you keep the X's in the first column, but you take the Y's that are in the second column, replace them with the constants find the determinant and it was negative 60. Then you put D sub X over D, that's negative three, D sub Y over D, that's negative two. With extra time, you can always go back and check this. Just make sure you're careful the first time around so you don't have to do it again. And then Kramer's rule with a three variable system, same sort of same process. The D determinant comes from X, Y, and Z's. Then the D sub X, you take out the X's, replace it with the constants. That was negative, or that was 50, yeah, negative 55 here. For D sub Y, you would take out the Y's, replace it with the constants, and you should have got 165. And then D sub Z, this should be Z here. Uh, take out the Z's and replace them with the constants, and you would have gotten 110. So the original D matrix was 55, that's over here. On your test, you're gonna have a little spot that says what is D, you're gonna write 55. Then what is D sub X, you're gonna write negative 55. D sub Y, 165. D sub Z, 110. And then your X, your Y, and your Z, or actually we'll just say solution. So you'll take that 55, negative 55 divided by 55, that's negative one. You'll take that 165 divided by 55, that's three. And you'll take the 110 divided by 55 and that's two. Again, the calculator's gonna help you with the speed on this one, hopefully catch some mistakes, but you gotta be really, really careful in the setup because no calculator can save you from a setup error. Like if you write the wrong part, wrong number to begin with and you go to type that in the calculator, obviously it's not gonna get caught. Questions on the warm-up or questions on the homework? All right, so chapter review, we'll get through this as much as we can. We go back to 7-5. So 7-5, 7-6, and 7-7 were what was on your quiz. Okay, 7-5 was addition, subtraction, and multiplication of matrices. Remember that addition and subtraction can only be done if they are the exact same dimensions. So if it's a two by three, it can only be added or subtracted from another two by three. If it's a two by two, it has to go with a two by two. Three by three with a three by three. So for A, I would take and multiply eight in on A. So I'd get negative 32, nope, negative 24, sorry. Negative 24, 16, 32, and eight. And then you would subtract from it two B. So I'd multiply two times B, and then actually I would have checked it from the beginning. That would have been the smarter thing to do. There are different dimensions, right? Save yourself the work.
Okay? And if it says explain why, then the answer is because they are different dimensions. B, A, and C are the same dimensions. I already did 8A, negative 24, 16, 32, 8. And then 2 times C, you can either multiply a negative 2 and then add them, or you can multiply a positive 2 and subtract. So totally up to you. So this would have been 2, 14, negative 6, and 12. And then negative 24 minus 2 is negative 26. 16 minus 14 is 2. 32 minus a negative 6 becomes 32 plus 6, or 38. And 8 minus 12 is negative 4. So be careful with your signs. The rule for multiplication is that the in-between numbers, right? So the second, which would be the columns on the first letter and the rows on the second letter. So if it says A times B, then A is a 2 by 2 and B is a 2 by 3. Inside numbers do match, so it can be done. And the outside numbers are what you're going to get. So I'm going to get a 2 by 3. And I'm looking at A and B. So the first spot here is row 1, column 1. Those are what I'm going to multiply together. Negative 3. And this is where mistakes got made. Sometimes we add it on the determinant and subtract it on the multiplication. It's the reverse. So when you are multiplying matrices, you multiply the two numbers and then you add them together. And the determinant, remember the I on the fish, is supposed to remind you that that's subtraction. Don't subtract when you're, when you're multiplying. So then I would get negative 9 plus 8, which is negative 1. And then I'd go to the next cell, which is row 1, column 2. So I'd get negative 3 times negative 1, which is 3, plus 2 times 5, which is 10. That's 13. And then I'd go to the next spot, which is row 1, column 3. Now multiplying row 1 by column 3, which would be 0, plus a negative 4, or minus 4, which is negative 4. Then I'm in the second row. So row 2, column 1, which is 12, plus 4, or 16. Row 2, oops, sorry. Row 2, column 2, negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. And then row 2, column 3, which is 0, minus 2, or negative 2. A and C, that's a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2. Inside numbers do match. This can be done. Okay? Outside numbers give you the results. This would be a 2 by 2. So row 1, column 1 would be negative 3 plus 6, which is 3. Row 1, column 2 would be negative 21 plus 12, which is negative 9. Row 2, column 1 would be 4 minus 3, which is 1, and row 2, column 2, 28 plus 6, which is 34. If it had said, let's say this was, um, let's say it said B and C, a 2 by 3 and a 2 by 2, that could not have done been done. Yep. For the first one, e, row one, column one. Yep, that's negative six. So this is negative nine. For for which? Oh, when you the, the go back. Okay, then came seven six. Okay, inverse of a matrix. So when you're finding the inverse of a two by two, this is one over the determinant and some of you forgot to put it under one for your quiz, so be careful. And then you switch the D and the A and you negate the B and the C or change the signs on the B and the C. So determinant would be negative two times negative three minus six times five or 6 minus 30, which is negative 24. And then I do 1 over negative 24 
times switch the A and the D, so the negative 3 and the negative 2 switch positions, change the signs on the 5 and the 6, they would both become negative. Distribute that in, so it would be negative 2 over negative 24, which is 2 over 24. Negative 5 over negative 24 is 5 over 24. Negative 6 over 24, positive 6 over 24. And negative 3 over 24, 3 over 24. And then they must be simplified. So 1 12th, 5 24 1 4th, and 1 8th. Questions on two by two inverse. Test is going to cover seven five to seven eight. Okay, again, you can use scientific calculators only, not function ones. So they can't have a matrix button or a matrix menu. You can use the scientific calculator the whole time. So we started with what was what on your quiz, 7, 5, 7, 6, 7, 7, and then we added to it all the stuff that we just talked about in that warm-up. So 7, 5 was addition, subtraction, scalar, and then multiplication. So remember that addition and subtraction, they have to be the exact same dimensions. Dimensions are rows by column. So if you look at... Example A here, it says 8A minus 2B. Before I even start that work, I would look at A and I would look at B and see if I can combine these. A is a 2 by 2. B is a 3 by 2. Those don't have the same dimensions, so you can't even do A. And if it asks why, it's they have different dimensions. B says 8A minus 2C. So A is a 2 by 2. C is a 2 by 2. These can be done. I would start by multiplying everything in A by 8. So I'd get negative 24, 16, 32, 8. And then you can either distribute in a positive 2 and subtract, which would be 2, 14, negative 6, 12. Or you can distribute in a negative two and add. Totally up to you. Obviously, whichever one makes the most sense for you is what you want to do. So negative 24 minus two would be negative 26. 16 minus 14 is two. 32 minus a negative six becomes 32 plus six or 38. And eight minus 12 is negative four. Then you got into multiplication. So with multiplication, the inner two numbers have to match. So it's row and then column and row and then column. These two have to match. And then these two are the result. So A and B are a two by three and a three by two. Not a three by two, sorry, a two by three. You still wouldn't have been able to do A, but this is a 2 by 3. So the inner two do match, which means the outer two would be my result. A two row, three column. Where the first one is row one, column one. I'm going to do row one, column one. And the mistakes made, I would say, between the multiplication and when you got to determine it is sometimes... You subtracted the multiplication and added the determinants the other way around. So when you go to find the multiplication, you are multiplying these and then adding them together. So negative 3 times 3 would be negative 9. And then negative 9. And then 2 times 4 is 8. So negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. Then you'd go row 1, column 2. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. 2 times 5 is 10. That's 13. And then you do row one, column three, negative three times zero is zero, and two times negative two is negative four, which is negative four. Then you're gonna repeat that whole process, but for row two, row two, column one, would be four times three, which is 12, plus four, that's 16. Row two, column two, would be negative four plus five, which is one. 
row two, column three, is zero minus two, which is negative two. And then it says A and C. So A and C, this time you're matching the middle two here, which works, and the outer two would be your result. This is gonna be a two by two this time. Row one, column one. Row, whoops, a daisy, sorry. Row one, go away. Column one would be negative three times one, negative three, and then two times negative three, negative six, that's negative nine. Row one, column two. would be negative 21 plus 12, which is negative nine. Row two, column one, would be four minus three, which is one, and row two, column two, would be 28 plus six, which is 34. If it had said, let's say it said um, B, C, okay, B and C, the energy numbers wouldn't have worked. This could not have been done. So just make sure you check it before you work all the way through it. And make sure you differentiate between adding and subtracting. Those have to be the same dimension. Multiplying the inner two have to match outer two is the result. And it's always rows and columns. Questions on any of those? Just be really careful with your signs and your multiplication and show your work. If you want some partial credit, you gotta show some work. All right, seven, six, inverse of a matrix. So this was a two by two, okay? Remember this is one over the determinant times we switch the A and the D and we change the sign on the B and the C. Some people Found the determinant, put it, didn't put it under one, okay? Some people switch the wrong signs or the wrong locations. So for this one, you're doing your little fish. Negative two times negative three would be six minus six times five is 30. That's negative 24. So it's one over negative 24 times switch A and D, which are the negative three and the negative two. Change the signs on B and C, which is the five and the six. Distribute that one over 24, or negative one 24ths in, and I'd get two 24ths, five 24ths, six 24ths, and three 24ths. And then they have to be reduced. So that would be one 12th, five 24ths, one fourth, and one eighth. Questions on the two by two inverse. Then comes the super fun one, right? The three by three inverse. So this is where our goal is to get to the one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So I want a one in the top left corner. First, if it's easy, if it's not easy, don't do it, okay? But if it's easy, obviously it helps the rest of it out. So what's one way of getting it without introducing fractions? Because yes, you might some, have, sometimes have to introduce fractions, but if you can avoid those, that'd be a good idea too. That'll get the zero. It will get the zero though. Okay. So negative, I would do the other way around. I would do negative one row three plus row two. That way I get a positive one. So I would do negative one here. And I'd get three, three, negative one, zero, one, negative one, negative two, negative three, one, one, zero, zero. And I get one, zero, zero, one, zero, negative one. I actually took, just took care of a whole row. That becomes row one. Do you want to do the ones first or the zeros first? 
So honestly, it doesn't, besides that top one being a one, what that helps you with is get that first column. So it's easy to just multiply and get the opposite if it's a one. If it is hard to get the one in that spot and it's easier to start working on the zeros, do the zeros. The other rule of thumb is don't get a zero, don't get a one in a row before you get the zeros other than that first one. So like I don't want to get, make four a one before I get the zero here and the zero here. Otherwise, by getting those zeros, I might lose that one again. So there's no purpose. All right, so then typically we work our way down. Again, this does not always have to be this way, but typically we work our way down. And if I wanted a zero there, I could do what? <coughs> oh, you're, so you're doing the zero here, right? Yeah. yeah, so I'm gonna do, like that's fine to go with that order, but I'm gonna do the negative two first. So I could do row one by two, two right? And I'm telling you right now, if you're not going to write your notation or show your work, you're going to lose a lot of credit when you make mistakes. You better be careful. Don't, me, don't make me work to give you partial credit, because guess what? I won't. Okay, that's going to take row one. I mean, row two's place. Okay, then I want to get the zero here. Only one way to do that, which is what? Good. Then I can get a zero here. I could get a zero here. I could, the other zeros are already taken care of you for you on the top. I could get a zero there. The order in which you do those, I'm sorry, I don't want a zero. Here, okay. I only have those two left to get. And the order in which you do those, it really doesn't matter. As long as I don't change that, like as long as I don't try to get a one in the row before I get the zero, the order in which you get the zeros doesn't really matter, okay? We tend to do the same pattern just because you guys are comfortable with patterns, but it doesn't mean you can't move it around. So which of those two zeros can be easier to get from this spot? The second. the second one, right? Like where the one is. How could I do that? Multiply either row one or row two by negative one and add them, yes? So let's try negative one times row two plus row three. I've only got one more zero left to go. It's where the negative three is. I cannot get that zero by combining it with row one. There's nothing to be able to multiply that zero by to cancel out, which means my only option is three row two plus row three. Once I get the left side with that pattern, one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, 
then the right side only, this part is my answer. So one, zero, negative one, one, negative one, zero, and six, negative three, negative two is the inverse to that matrix. <clears throat> You know how long it took you to take this quiz. You know that we've now added on determinants for area, determinants for collinear, and Kramer's rule. Speed is going to be a factor, which means the care more careful you are the first time through and getting that right without having to go back and find your mistake and correct it, the better off you're going to be. My advice, make sure you get through at least all of the problems before you go back and try to find a mistake on this problem. Don't get caught on this problem and then not be able to get to the other ones. All right, minor and cofactors. So the way this is going to work on your test is I'm actually just going to ask you for the cofactors, okay? Which means you got to find the minors, change the signs. That's it. So it's not going to be a two-part question. It is just the cofactors. So remember, for each one, so if I wanted to find the minor first, I would do minor 1, 1, minor 1, 2, minor 1, 3, Minor 2, 1, minor 2, 2, minor 2, 3, and then minor 3, 1, minor 3, 2, minor 3, 3. And then the ones you're going to change the signs on, because again, it's going to ask you for the cofactors, are 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 2, that north, south, east, west location. So for each of these, you're going to cross through the row and the column that they're in. And then find the determinant of what's left. So 1, 1, I would find the determinant of 4, negative 1, 2, and 5. And I'd get 20 minus a negative 2, which becomes 22. And then 1, 2, again, row 1, this time column 2. And I'd get 0, negative 1, 5, and 5. 0 minus a negative 5 becomes plus 5. That's 5. The cofactor to that is going to be a negative 5. Row 1, column 3, this would be 0, 4, 5, 2. And I'd get 0 minus 20, which is negative 20. Then I'd be doing row 2, row 2, column 1. And that's negative 2, 3, 2, 5. That's negative 10 minus 6, negative 16. Row 2, column 2. That's 1, 3, 5, 5. And I'd get 5 minus 15, which is negative 10. Row 2, column 3. 1, negative 2, 5, 2. 2 minus a negative 10 becomes 2 plus 2, 2 plus 10, which is 12. And the negative 16 and the 12 are the ones you would change your sign on for your cofactor. And then third row, first column, this would be negative 2, 3, 4, negative 1. I'd get 2 minus 12, which is negative 10. Row 3, column 2 would be 1. 3, 0, negative 1. I'd get negative 1 minus 0, which is negative 1. That one would change signs when I do the cofactor. And then row 3, column 3, and it'd be 1, negative 2, 0, and 4. 4 minus 0, which is 4. So the cofactors are going to be 22, negative 5, negative 20, Positive 16, negative 10, negative 12, negative 10, positive 1, positive 4. So you could be asked for all of the cofactors, or you actually could just be asked for one cofactor. So if I just said cofactor 3, 2... Then you'd have to know you're crossing through row three, column two, finding the determinant of what's left, which is that negative one, and then knowing that the location of three, two is one I change signs on. So just be careful because to determine on time, I may just do a couple of them. I might do the whole thing. I'm not 100% I'm not sure yet. I'm still trying to tweak the time.
All right. Then came, so in 7-7 seven, seven was all the determinants. Obviously, because we use the determinant so much between the minor and the Kramer's rule, I'm not going to ask you a question just on determinant. So you're going to see it the way we just did it with the minors for the 2 by 2 okay? And then you're going to see it with the Kramer's rule for the 2 by 2 and the 3 by 3 So 7-8 was the application of the matrices and the determinants, okay? The area, remember this is 1 half of the determinant, and it has to be positive. Okay, this is filling in the column of ones. The collinear points, the determinant would equal zero. If it doesn't, then it's not collinear. And then we started the day off with these, the determinant of the Kramer's rule. Okay, so the D is the X's and the Y's. The D sub X, you take out the X's, replace it with the constants. The D sub Y's, you take out the Y's and replace it with the constants. And then your X is D sub X over D, Y, D sub Y over D. And the three threes, we also started the day with. This would be the X's, the Y's, and the Z's. The D sub X, you take out the X's, replace it with the constants. D sub Y, you take out the Y, replace it with the constants. D sub Z, you take out the Z and replace it with the constants. And then the X is D sub X over D. Y, D sub Y over D. And Z, D sub Z over D. And again, you can use scientific calculators.